Today I want to talk about no nutrition for orchids. What is the result? Why no nutrition? What happens? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? So welcome to this video. And basically it pertains to inorganic growing simply because organic media, there's always a little bit of something in there because the organic media has a certain characteristic about it, be it that it's breaking down. There's always a little bit of some form of nutrition in organic media, but inorganic media has zero. And that is why I prefer to grow in inorganic media because I can control how many nutrients I want to put into the orchid based on what the orchid is doing. I don't have to worry about my media breaking down. So in this case, this is my Dendrobium lori mortimer. Back in June, the root system had completely collapsed because she was in LECA and she was growing well in LECA up to a certain point. You see, this orchid is a warm to hot grower and my winters are not always conducive to her preferences. So the LECA gets quite cold because of the evaporative cooling. And for that reason, the entire root system was compromised and I started from scratch. So when I repotted her back in June, clearly I had some root nubbins starting and that is why I went in to try and save this orchid. Yes, I've got her set back and I put her into lava rock, even though lava rock with very, very vigorous orchids is not my preferred media at all because it is so unforgiving on the root system when it comes to repotting, when it comes to needing to clean up, etc. And that would mean obviously a disturbance every two years to get that all cleaned up. And then you would set back the orchid again two years. But back to the nutrition. If there is no root system, clearly there's no point of adding any kind of fertilizer into the pot. And especially when it comes to new roots, they shouldn't be touching any kind of nutrients in the early stages of the development because A, they are probably not going to take it up. They have this kind of a Teflon effect. They repel water and possibly the only thing that would result in adding nutrients is to burn the new roots and then a stressed orchid with no root system will probably be set back even further while it is trying to develop a new root system if that is even possible. Why am I bringing this up? Well, my Lori Mortimer went into this pot of self-watering with medium-sized lava rock despite my preferences not to use lava rock when it comes to vigorous orchids. It was not up to me to decide because of my preferences. It was up to me to save the orchid based on the fact I didn't get the LECA ratio right. And there was no time to experiment with regards to putting her back into LECA, trying to get it right, and then risking losing the orchid. Long story short, but I needed to give that background because what is the result of absolutely no nutrients for this orchid since June? I believe June 19th, the video came out about this orchid and we are now in mid-September. Well, beautiful growth. It has grown. It has gotten itself a great root system, but with no, absolutely no fertilizer whatsoever. Only recently, and I'm talking about the last 10 days, am I now starting to apply 100 parts per million just to tide her over to build up her strength for the winter that is coming. But what else has happened? Well, you can see how beautifully the canes have plumped up. Roots are active, we are a go, the orchid has been rescued. She is very set back, Hakuna Matata, she has been rescued. That was the point of the exercise of me going away from Lekka and putting her in lava rock, which I know is a guarantee, it works. However, what else has happened with no nutrients? I got myself two spikes. One is down here and one is up here. And I've got myself a bloom. Sorry about the sun washing that out. Do you believe it is a cloudy day today and I can hardly show you the bloom. Anyway, we'll see the bloom on another day. This is about nutrients. Despite the spikes, which was very surprising for me, all the buds blasted on this spike. And this spike up here. More bud blast. So it shows how much energy an orchid is exuding through spikes and blooms. 
I'm losing this bud as well back here. I'm not going to pop. Well, I'm going to pop it off. There you go. This came off in my hand. I just let them fall off. I don't try to force them or anything. But this is the thing. The orchid will take up as much energy as she needs to create blooms in order for survival. I consider these two, when I saw the two spikes, I consider them stress spikes based on her history. But I just let it go and let the spikes develop because I didn't add nutrients. I was more focused on making sure that whatever roots she was going to produce, it would get into the pot, no burning, no nothing. Important that this growth performs with a root system. We can work on the nutrient levels next time around. So this is the result of absolutely no nutrients when you grow inorganically. You will get blooms, you might get a spike, you will get bud blast because there is not enough energy for the orchid to be able to grow new growth, grow a new root system, bring out her spike for survival purposes and bloom as you would if you applied nutrients. So this has nothing to do with how they would grow in nature. In nature as well, if they were on a tree trunk or let's say on lime rock, there would always be debris and all kinds of residue in the tree canopy or on the ground, wherever they would be growing. In our environment without nutrients, these orchids will not be able to perform. And I just thought it would be very interesting to point that out as to why we sometimes talk about levels of nutrients based on an orchid and what would be the case because in nature nobody goes around and fertilizes them. So for the time being right now, just to support this growth, the blooms are secondary. I mean, I'm very glad to see another Lori Mortimer bloom. Let's push her back and let's see if we can see the bloom without the sun blaring on it. And yes, it is a hazy day. She's pretty, I'm glad to see her back. And I'm letting her bloom out because now she is getting a little bit of fertilizer. But I did want to let you know that the reason inorganic growing is so advantageous is the levels of how much fertilizer we can put in. We can control it based on what the orchid is doing. And the results are clear that if the orchid does not get any kind of fertilizer at all, then there is a struggle between what comes first a new growth with new roots or blooms. In this case, she's done it all, but she's on her road to recovery. Now I'm going to show you the other two dendrobiums that I had a similar issue with from Lekka and I put them into Lava Rock and tell you why I was okay doing that. And let's have a look-see how they've progressed. Here's my little dendrobium Sutkinoi that had the similar problem. My Lekka setup did not exactly work for her. Again, there was no time for experimenting. If I wanted to save the orchid, I go with what I know will work. And in this case, smaller lava rock because the roots are also much more finer as opposed to the Lori Mortimer roots that are much fleshier. They have sort of a cattleya type root size. So small lava rock. And look at this little growth here. Haha, <laughs> big mature growth. The difference being this orchid is a smaller variety. It doesn't necessarily get as big as a Lori Mortimer, so it doesn't have to push as hard for the growth or the roots to grow. And you can see that I had enough back bulbs for the energy for it to do what it has to do. And in this case, it has absorbed two of the back bulbs right here, which I'm glad I can snip off just while the orchid is in the pot, but she is now pot bound. Her growth is fully developed. She might even decide to bloom. And if she does, I will let her because she has plenty of energy. I only added fertilizer once the roots were well into the pot. Before that, she was just getting flushed or misted to keep the humidity around the base of the lava rock. The difference being, again, between the two, we have a miniature one and we have a big and vigorous one. Different energy requirements. but. Both are recovering according to the fact that they now have roots in the pot and can now get fertilizer. But up until the time that I could apply fertilizer, she had to push out this growth all the way up like halfway to her final height. She had to do that all on her own using the reserves of the back bulb. That's what I love about orchids. If they have reserves, then they're going to make it. And this one actually has not been set back. Let's look at the gyrac horn. Same principle, Lekka before, didn't work out. Also a warm to hot grower. 
and I had a little nubbin that took forever to develop. I had a strand of a root, but <laughs> next to nothing really to write home about. So I left that in the pot, considered it anchoring and a prayer to see if it would function, nothing. But as this now is starting to grow, isn't that a gorgeous, gorgeous sight? Oh, I love it. As this now is starting to push and develop its new growth, look at how it's taking the energy from the back canes. These were plump when I potted her up into this setup with small lava rock and self-watering. Absolutely no fertilizer either. This orchid will be set back, but she is going to be absolutely fine. Her reserves, my misting, was all that it took and the roots are starting to go down into the pot. And those nubbins are just a sight for sore eyes as far as I'm concerned. But in general, in organic growing, fertilizer is paramount. We like it like that. We like to be able to control what goes into the orchid in order for something to come out. If the setup isn't working, paramount is to save the orchid and not to worry about the setup until the orchid is strong enough. And then we can start to experiment again. For now, these guys are gonna be okay. I just thought it was super interesting to see how do orchids respond with no nutrients for a considerable amount of time. Will they make it? And the answer is yes, even though they will be set back, but it makes perfect sense not to add any nutrients into a pot when there are no roots, and then definitely not add any nutrients into a pot when the roots are itty bitty like this one right here. They are not ready to absorb the fertilizer, and the point being, leave it be. The orchid has enough reserves. No nutrients is not a problem when it comes to saving an orchid with no roots. I hope this was of interest. A little update as well on the Lori Mortimer and the Sutkinoi and the Gyrac Horn. The only orchid that is now not getting any nutrients is this one. The other two, we are a go with 100 parts per million. We can resume service as usual. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope I got my point across. If not, if I did not circle back to a thought, please, please use the comments below and prompt me with a question or a thought that I did not finish and complete. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Your time is so very, very much appreciated and I hope to see you in the next video. Please take care and stay safe. Bye.